Today I'm going to share with you my unboxing of the Watercolour Confections Pastel Dreams watercolour set. I will share with you my first impressions of painting with the watercolour set and also I will finish with painting a portrait with the Pastel Dreams watercolour set. So let's get on with the review. So I'm really excited to open this box because I've been recommended this box of paints and I decided to just go for it since I'm in lockdown and I thought I'd treat myself. So as I open the box, I can see a really good quality tin. It's got the ring on the bottom and it's got the sticker on the front which shows me the colours. So if I decide to buy more because there are more in the range, I will know exactly which colours I am using. It has this nice ring on the bottom so that if I decide to take the palette out on the go as it says on the back then I will be able to hold it while I'm painting. It has two palettes that I can use inside and this lovely swatch card which I will be using in a moment and I really like the packaging of the pans on the inside that's a really nice touch and the tin obviously or the, the um, grid of pans lifts out which is really useful and I'll be lifting that out later. It just helps for cleaning so I'm now going to open all of the pans individually. What I would say to you is a couple of points that I'll make that I found as I was working with the pans during the demonstration. One is that unfortunately they have printed the number of each of the pans on the side, which for me um, wasn't a good idea. They should have printed them on the front because that makes it easier for ordering when you run out. So. For me, what I did was I wrote the number of each of the pans on the front so that if I run out of any in the future, I will then be able to make sure that I've got the right colour. Say for the blues and the pinks, it's probably not easy to identify which one's which. So just for me, I would do that. Now the reason I've done that is because when I opened the packaging, and this was the same with my Winsor & Newtons, I noticed that they moved around quite a lot. And especially if you're thinking about taking them out, or if you need to move your um, all of your resources around for storage, um, they moved around quite a lot. So I got some double-sided tape and stuck them down before I started painting for the demonstration. So that might be something that's worth bearing in mind before you start setting up for your painting. So now I'm gonna product test the paints. I'm going to test them on this cute little card, but I'm also going to test them on a large piece of cold pressed paper because I do a lot of wet on wet technique. I want to test them with water at the bottom end of this swatch. So I will test them wet on dry on this swatch just so I can see what they're like. Neat, concentrated, but also on this large piece of cold pressed paper just to see what they're like when they're watered down at the bottom. So I'm going to apply water at the bottom and then work it up as I would do if I was doing a, a gra graduated tint. So you'll see what they're like with a variety of tones. I found that the brown colour was like a raw umber, it was very natural, earthy tone. And the chocolate was just like a milk chocolate. I couldn't quite understand why these colours were in there. They didn't seem to mi mix with the theme of the pastel colours. Um, and to be honest with you, I would have been quite happy for them not to be there and to be replaced with a couple of other colours. Um, but when I created my painting later, as you will see, they did work. The chocolate one worked. I, I could easily do without the brown, but that's just personal choice. Um, the red, it's okay. And um, when it was dry, it dried paler as most reds do and all watercolours do anyway. And the consistency of these colours is like a mixture between gouache and watercolour anyway. They're opaque and this was another reason why my friend recommended them to me, just to try them out because she knows I like watercolours. Um, <clears throat> but it was more of a crimsony red, a cold red. This tone here, rose, is a more of a pinky tone. And again, it mixed really well with the water. The browns didn't mix that well with the water. As you can see, there's a line there where they didn't mix that well, which was very disappointing. Lemonade is a very good tone that I would use for flesh tones. So this palette here, you could quite easily use for portraits, which is what I'm buying them for. So this is a very good palette for me. If you're doing um, portraits, 
and especially colourful portraits, which I like to do, this would be a very good palette for you. So I'm now moving on to the citrus colour, which is an orange, but I found this orange quite dominant. Now my Winsor & Newton Cotman palette, um, and I think with a lot of other watercolours, orange and yellow seem to be quite strong and dominant pigments. So again, this palette could have done without these colours. They tend to be quite overpowering. And when I show you my final painting, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so hang on until the end to see the painting and you will see what I mean by that. They do tend to overpower the rest of the group of the colours. Um, now, this is my favourite group of colours here. I do tend to like cold colours. And this colour here is the one that I bought this palette for, to be honest with you, which does seem quite extravagant. This turquoise is just amazing. I do love this colour. And this colour is Sea Dream. Really fun names for the colours. The next one is Paradise, which is a more green turquoise. Re the colours are just so vivid in all of these. Um, and then after that is another fun name, Pool Party. I love the names of these. The yellow is called Bumblebee. The orange is called Citrus. That pinky flesh tone is called Lemonade. Really fun names for these colours. And then we have a pale blue after this called Icy Sky. These blues and these turquoises tended to mix more. And I think out of the bunch of colours, the blues are definitely my favourites. And I can see myself using these a lot in the future for my portraits and possibly for other um, projects, but the portraits, I certainly will be using these for my colour themed portraits. And then the Lilac Rain, um, you can see I'm having to squish these in. I probably should have measured this out. Um, so the Lilac Rain is quite dark and opaque, which is fine. As I say, the reason, another reason why these were recommended to me was because they're a mixture between gouache and watercolour so they are quite different so I'm looking forward to using these in the future just to see what they're like. I'm now going to take you through a portrait piece that I produced as an experiment of using these paints and I thought a portrait would be good because I mainly do portraits and I bought this set to use for portraits. So I just chose an image of Pixabay and I have started by adding the skin tones. I use the lemonade color and chocolate and I'm also using chocolate for the hair. I use the wet on wet technique for the face and I'm using wet on dry for the hair because I wanted to add detail. So I'm going to try and incorporate all of the colors Well, I will use all of the colors at some point during the painting. I'm now wetting down the background because what I want to do is just see what the colours look like on wet on wet technique on the darker areas and the lighter areas and these will take quite a long time to dry and at the end you will see what they look like. Um, and also as I mentioned earlier the yellows and the oranges you will see how dominant they are within this palette of paints. I'm now going to add colour to the hair. I've wet it down because again I'm going to use wet on wet technique and I'm adding lemonade here and then I'm going to add accents of chocolate for the darker areas. So I'm now adding icy sky to the shirt area and I am going to pick out darker areas with pool party. And for the lips, I decided to use rose because I thought that was a really good tone to use for the lips. And I'm then adding a second layer of skin tones. I wet the areas down first and I'm reapplying areas such as rose to get darker areas. So now I'm going to start adding more details with colour pencils. I will put details of all the colour pencils that I use in the description below. The reason for that is that I couldn't get all of the tones and details I wanted with the pastels um, colours. I should also mention that I didn't manage to film all of the colours I applied. So the flowers with the rose and the crimson in the foreground I added later. So now I'm going to give you my verdict of what I think of the paints. 
On the packaging, it says that they are artist grade. However, on the packaging, it doesn't give any information about pigments, staining, granulation, transparency, or light fast which you would expect of artist quality paint because if you're selling your work then really you need to know if the paint is light fast or not so this is disappointing considering that they're supposed to be artist grade I would because of that put them in between student and artist grade because I do believe that they are good quality paints but they should really have that information on the box with regards to do I like these paints, I love these paints. I can't wait to use them in future portraits and future projects. And I really love the colours. I think they're so interesting and so exciting. So I definitely love them. I just would prefer to have more information on the box about their light fastness and the actual qualities of the paints. If you enjoyed this clip, then make sure you check out more clips like this on the reviews and also the watercolour playlist. Don't forget to look in the description below for details of the resources used in today's clip and where you can buy the resources used in today's clip. Finally, if you would like to see more content like this, then please make sure you subscribe and hit the bell to be notified of future content.